What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rovardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. Man, what a great time it is to be a New York sports fan. I just want to get that out of the way. New York Knicks basketball popping off once again. Huge win in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals. And tonight, we got some New York Rangers hockey. They're up 1-0 in the second round of the postseason as well. Great time to be a New York sports fan. But the New York Giants, it's quiet right now. It's the offseason. We're getting ready for OTAs at the end of the month, rookie minicamp, all that fun stuff, leading into the summer practices and into training camp. And before you know it, sooner or later, the regular season is going to be back underway in September. And obviously, we can't wait for that. But in the meantime, it's time to dissect this team, take a look at this roster, break it down, and discuss why the New York Giants may or may not find success this upcoming season. And one of the things that we want to focus in on, which will be the, su the subject of conversation, in today's episode, this cornerback position, right? What is happening in the New York Giants secondary? Because they don't seem to have any plans to re-sign Adoree Jackson. They already gave his number away. He said that he would like to be back ideally or way before he even entered free agency, but the New York Giants haven't had any negotiations with him, don't seem interested in bringing him back. So subsequently, this CB2 position is wide open. Their formerly established starter at the spot, no longer here. Who takes over the job? That's what we want to discuss in this episode. Who on the roster could the New York Giants see step up into that starting job? Of course, there is still time for them to maybe go out into free agency, go out there, sign a veteran cornerback. Maybe he could be the starter in week one, but we really want to focus on the guys on the Giants roster because honestly, low key, their starter is probably already on the roster. I don't think they need to go out into free agency. They had a nice draft pick in the third round, which we'll talk about. And they do have a veteran on the roster who I think could be their starting CB2 if they need him to be. So that's what we're going to go ahead and discuss in today's episode. But before we do so, make sure to leave a like. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And how are you feeling? about the New York Giants CB2 position. I'm doing pretty good, man. And listen, the Giants, I know, I know a lot of people in the comments have been like, talk about the CB2 position, talk about the secondary. And well, I decided today's the day we're going to do that. And listen, the Giants didn't allocate a big time uh, like draft pick towards the cornerback position. They didn't allocate big time free agency money towards the uh, you know, a cornerback position. And um, Andrew Phillips, obviously, he isn't going to be that primary CB2. We more so see him, the Giants more so see him as a primary slot option. A pretty physical guy, you know, decent size, really, really smart player, great interview, intelligent. Um, he's going to be able to operate with that intelligence, utilize um, his athletic profile, which he's not the best athlete in the world, but he's such a smart player that they hope they can kind of marry those two um, into a better scenario. Uh, he was primarily a boundary guy at Kentucky, and now he's kind of transitioning into this nickel spot. So we'll see how he fares at the NFL level. But on the outside, the Giants have three guys and three primary options here. They have Nick McLeod, they have Cordell Flott, and they have Trey Hawkins. Um, all three of those guys you could say right now are – underwhelming in terms of can we rely on them i'm not going to sit here and tell you that i think we can but this gives me major jason pinnock vibes in terms of the giants probably feel as though one of those three guys are capable of starting um in my opinion right now i view cordell flott as the cb2 last year cordell flott played 519 snaps um, he gave up 452 yards, three touchdowns, an interception, and three pass breakups. Now, he had a couple of really good games. He had a couple of really bad games. Um, you know, when you look at some of his worst games, he gave up against Seattle 53 yards, 59 yards to uh, Green Bay, and then 92 yards to Philadelphia in Week 16. Giants ended, ended up winning that game, but I think he was going up against Devonta Smith. So he's already had a lot of experience against uh, much like better receiver, like really good receivers for the most part. Um, that's, I think, a good thing for Cordell Flott. I think he has that experience so the Giants know, well, he's gone up against some of these really good players. We know that he can hang. Um, at the very least, there's upside there. We've seen he's been sticky in coverage. Maybe he's missed a couple tackles. Maybe he's, you know, struggled. This is what we have to work on. Jerome Henderson definitely is getting after it with him, I'm sure, once training camp comes around. Um, but Flott, you know, decent size. And listen, he's only 22 years old. He has two years in the NFL, and he's not even 23 years old yet. And that's probably what the Giants are thinking. That's probably what they were thinking when they drafted him in the first place. This is the 20-year-old kid that by the time he's ready to start is still only going to be 22 years old. So, you know, Anthony, we'll start with Cordell Flott. I know, you know, you like him. Do you think that he is capable of being that CB2? I think if we're... If the season were to start right now, the Giants probably see him as the starting option alongside Deontay Banks, barring any other acquisitions. I actually disagree with you, and I didn't think that's the way you were going to take this conversation towards Cordell Flott. 
in my mind, the starting CB2, if the season were to begin tomorrow, is Nick McLeod. I thought Nick McLeod played well. Granted, small sample size. He was only on the field for 312 total snaps last season, only 182 in coverage. But I thought that he played really great football in those snaps that he was on the field for, especially talking about that Philadelphia game that you just mentioned, Alex. Cordell Flagg got a little bit picked apart there uh, from Devontae Smith. Oppositely, Nick McLeod played really good football against A.J. Brown in that first quarter. Now, granted, A.J. Brown did go down with an injury uh, and missed the majority of that game on a tackle from Nick McLeod, but Nick McLeod was playing some damn good ball and matching up really well with A.J. Brown in that game, and I thought, to me, if the New York Giants thought that they had their starter on the roster, they probably looked at that final game of the season. McLeod made a really solid impression on them before the regular season came to a close, and they probably thought, hey, that might be our guy. We might have something here. He could take over for Adore Jackson next season. So you, you went through the stats on uh, Cordell Flat. I'll give you the stats on uh, Nick McLeod. 22 targets in coverage, only let up 15 receptions for 152 yards, only gave up one touchdown, had an interception, and a pass breakup. All those stats from PFF. He made 20 tackles, only missed four tackles, so that's not too bad either. And forced two fumbles. Uh, so a little bit of physicality here. If you want to go by the PFF grades, he graded in at a 74.8 with an 80.7 overall coverage grade, which was very high. He reached the 90 overall coverage grade mark twice last season, once against the Eagles in Week 18, as I mentioned. And he had a 91.3 coverage grade against Washington in Week 11. That big win, he was going up against uh, Terry McLaurin. He wasn't even targeted once in coverage, but he had that high of a coverage grade, which would indicate to you he was locked down the entire time, and Sam Howell wasn't even throwing the football uh, Nick McLeod's way because he was playing so well in that game. So, and granted, I know Sam Howell's a pretty bad quarterback, but hey, Nick McLeod had a great performance on the road against Washington and that home against Philadelphia. And I thought that overall, when he was asked to step up, when he was put into the lineup, especially the final three games of the season, he started those games. Man, I thought that he played pretty well. I, I liked the way that Nick McLeod played. So not to discredit Cordell Flott in any way. You're right. He is the young talent. He's going into his third season. But Nick McLeod is also only 25. I think he'll be 26 when the season begins. And similarly to what you mentioned with Jason Pinnock, where there was kind of a he's kind of like an undrafted guy that the Giants identified off the waiver wire and picked up. Very similar story with Nick McLeod, who was an undrafted free agent in 2021 to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the Giants obviously had some familiarity with him, Joe Shane and, uh, and Brian Dable coming over from Buffalo. So they identified McLeod on the waiver wire one day and said, hey, six foot one, 190 pound cornerback, only 25 years old. Let's bring him over. And over the past two years, he's been a backup for the Giants, but he's gotten a decent amount of playing time, was on the field for 583 total snaps in 2022. And to his credit, probably, I mean, he played well. He probably felt like he deserved a larger role in 2023, not a diminished role. And Honestly, he did deserve to play more last season, and I think that he will play more this season. He's been with the Giants for two years. Anytime he's been on the field, he's played some good football. I expect him to be on the field more this upcoming season with this position battle pretty much just wide open. I, I think that this is Nick McLeod's position to lose, not Cordell Flott's. And again, I like Cordell Flott, but I prefer Cordell Flott in the slot. I don't think that he is suited outside. I think he's small. I think he's not as physical as he needs to be in press coverage. McLeod can play in press coverage, and he really proves that in those reps that he had against A.J. Brown in Week 18. And again, I know A.J. Brown went out of the game early, but if you watch that game over, McLeod was physical. He was in A.J. Brown's face, and man, if you want to talk about physical wide receivers... Who else but A.J. Brown, maybe D.K. Metcalf, the most physical guys in the league. So seeing McLeod kind of get in the face of Brown and play well in press coverage against him was an encouraging sight to me. It told me that his skill set, the, the skill set that McLeod possesses, really fits what the New York Giants like in their defensive backs. Physical at the point of attack, physical on the line of scrimmage, press coverage, really good uh, and sound and technical in their coverage. I really like Nick McLeod to be that CB2 for the Giants. And so to get back to Cordell Flott, though, Alex, I just like him a lot in the slot. I thought that he's played really well there. I like his speed. I like that he is willing and able to tackle when he needs to. But I think that when you're getting into those nickel packages and you need those extra defensive backs on the field, you need a lot of speed. And I think that's where Cordell Flott comes into play. He's got a lot of that speed. However, I do think Andrew Phillips is probably going to take his starting job at that nickel uh, cornerback position. So where does Cordell Flott fit in here if McLeod wins that CB2 job is the question. Will McLeod win that CB2 job is also a big question. 
But right now, he's the leader in the clubhouse for me, and I, I'm leaning towards Nick McLeod. Again, we got to get through OTAs. We got to get through training camp, but we got to see how he performs in these practices. But like I said, if the season were to start tomorrow and we needed to suit up a CB2, I think Nick McLeod is the guy for that job. He 100% could be. Look, I'm not ruling Nick McLeod out as someone who could win this job for sure. I just think that they've been developing Cordell Flott for the better part of two years now. And similar to Jason Pinnock, when nobody really saw him coming out of the woodwork and starting... I think the Giants probably see Cordell Flott as taking that big step forward. And, you know, I've said this a lot in the past, like, two or three months. It is time for the Giants to graduate players that have been developing for two or three years. You know what I mean? Um, guys like Dane Belton, like, has to play a bigger role. Guys like Cordell Flott have to pay, play a bigger role. Edvin Neal have to play a bigger role. Um, there's Micah McFadden, I get the same thing there. So, you know, Wandale Robinson, he's already a, a really solid player that's going to probably have a good season. So I'm looking forward to him. Bellinger is another guy I'd love to see more active in the passing game. There are a lot of players on this roster that simply need to pan out. They need to contribute. Um, the Giants have gotten so little value from their mid to late round draft picks over the last decade or so that it's, it's been a hindrance on the team's development and success. Um, you need these mid to late round picks, some of them, at least every now and then you need one to hit. Like, you can't sustain um, success if you don't eventually stumble upon a good contributor that's not a first or second round pick. You can't build a team through first, second round picks and, and free agency. You just can't do it. So guys that are mid to late round draft picks, you know, Cordell Flott's the perfect example. Third round pick, 20-year-old rookie two years ago out of LSU. You know, this is the type of guy that you invest time in. You invest, uh, you know, all of that effort to try and develop to become a starter at some point in time. A little bit more weight would do him some good. Um, you know, he had a 15.6% missed tackle rate last year, 30 tackles. I'd like him to be a little bit more efficient there. Um, you know, he has a lot of experience against some really good, talented uh, receivers. I do think that there's a lot to work with. Let Nick McLeod and Cordell Flott battle it out for the starting job. Now, Nick McLeod, as you said, 312 snaps. You know, that's it's not a lot, but it's something. He only gave up, uh, you know, 152 yards, a touchdown, interception, a pass breakup, as you referenced earlier. You had some really, really good games. Um, I like Nick McLeod a lot. 6'1", 190 pounds, former undrafted free agent, by the way, of the Buffalo Bills. Um, the Giants have a lot of former Buffalo Bill players. So, you know, he's pretty... He's been pretty solid as a um, coverage guy over the past few seasons when his, num when his number has been called. In 2022, you know, he only gave up, he gave up, what, 300 yards and uh, had four pass breakups over almost 600 snaps. He did give up four touchdowns. Um, but, you know, you look for him to improve, and he had a couple of really good games last season. This seems to be more like an open competition for the Giants. Now, if Darren Waller retires and the team cuts a veteran cornerback, I could see the Giants maybe bringing in a guy to compete with them. Um, but this, to me, right now, it's Cordell Flott versus Nick, 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 versus Nick McLeod. Let the best man win. And Andrew Phillips, obviously, you know, maybe Cordell Flott cross trains and has the opportunity um, to win that job in the slot as well. And Andrew Phillips, I don't think you draft him. Uh, without the intention of him having a really good chance of winning that slot job. Now, I don't want to disregard um, Trey Hawkins either. Trey Hawkins is a freak athlete, really solid young player, had flashes of excellence, and, you know, he's big. Like, he can tackle. He just, um, you know, needs to clean up the fundamentals a little bit. You know, what are your thoughts on Trey Hawkins as a sleeper in this equation, or at least developing into a competent backup, so a guy that can step in and, and help your team immediately instead of being more of a liability? Yeah, no, I have no doubts that Trey Hawkins will develop into that competent backup because he's played really well in practice, and that is something that teams value, a guy who does show up and perform well in practice. Uh, you know, throughout last training camp, we heard a lot of buzz about Hawkins, and he ended up winning that starting job through the way that he played in the summer in training camp. He'll probably have a place on this team for the next few years just because of his performances in training camp. It's really important to have good practice squad guys to help strengthen the rest of your team. You know, iron sharpens iron in practice. Uh, and not only as a good practice squad guy for Hawkins, not saying that that's where he's going to wind up, but on the roster as a cornerback who you've seen turn in high level reps against your own competition, you could feel comfortable putting him out on the field during the regular season if need be. And I'm talking about him as a likely backup, but he definitely has the opportunity here to win the starting job. It is totally possible that what happened last year was playing in practice. Trey Hawkins looked great. 
and then playing in the regular season, he didn't look so great because of the scheme. It is totally possible that he just wasn't comfortable running with his back to the quarterback playing man coverage in a blitz-heavy Wink Martindale system. This is a totally different defensive scheme that they're going to be running this season with Shane Bowen, where the cornerbacks aren't going to have their back to the quarterback that often. They're going to be looking at the quarterback and have their eyes in the backfield and reading him and reading the coverage through their zone drops. And that's going to create opportunities for Trey Hawkins to kind of just sit there and let the game come to him rather than play from behind, which is what he and Banks were oftentimes asked to do, again, in that Martindale system. It was very aggressive. It put those guys alone with barely any safety help but the majority of the time. It really asked these rookies to do way too much. And now going into this new season... Trey Hawkins, hopefully a little bit better. Deontay Banks, I think, is going to take a step forward. Playing more zone coverage, they're going to be asked to do a little bit less. And less sometimes is more. And I think that's going to be the case for this New York Giants defensive scheme. I'm feeling really good about the optics here with Shane Bowen taking over as a Giants defensive coordinator because I do think this team is actually more suited to play well in zone coverage than they ever were in man due to the personnel that they have in their secondary. When your secondary... <clears throat> isn't very strong, excuse me, you need your guys to be able to play well in zone coverage rather than run across the entire field chasing CD Lamb in man coverage. It wasn't a smart strategy for the New York Giants. So that kind of leads me to believe that any of these guys could step up and play in this position. It's really going to come down to who plays better in this scheme as compared to last year's scheme. And again, I think that Hawkins has a chance where Maybe he just played really well in coverage during practice, and it was the way they were using him in the regular season that screwed him over. Maybe the talent is still there, so I don't want to rule out Trey uh, Trey Hawkins at all just yet. I'm not going to rule out any of these guys. The Giants have some underrated talent, I think, in the secondary. Just one of the points that you made, though, Alex, that I want to counter with is you mentioned how Cordell Flott is one of those guys that the Giants have been developing behind the scenes and need to graduate. I feel the same way about Nick McLeod. I feel like over the last two years, he's been on a similar track as Cordell Flott, where he's been getting on the field in spurts, he's been developing behind the scenes, and now it's time for him to graduate into that larger role, and so it's really going to turn into, let the best man win. Who plays better in practice? Who performs better in training camp in preseason? Flott versus McLeod. One thing to note, though, Flott has dealt with injuries, and McLeod has been healthy over the last two years. Maybe that gives him an edge and gets him onto the field in a larger capacity compared to Cordell Flott. That's another thing to factor in here. But the Giants, they're kind of stuck in a, in between a rock and a hard place because in their secondary, they have a lot of guys. They have a lot of guys that they want to get on the field, but they don't have any guys that need to be on the field. Nobody that stands out is, we can't take this guy off of the field just yet. So it's going to be who steps up and is like, you can't take me off the field because I'm better than everybody else. Right now, they don't have that. They have a bunch of replacement level starters. So they either need someone to develop and take that step forward and become irreplaceable, or you're right, they probably do need to look ahead to free agency on the waiver wire at the end of preseason and find a veteran starter who's good enough to be a 17-game player for you. So it'll be interesting to see how that shapes out, but that's really kind of my thoughts there on Trey Hawkins and, and some of the points that you made on Cordell Flott, but... I do think that Nick McLeod and Cordell Flott are kind of leading this two-man race with Trey Hawkins kind of inching behind them, just mainly because Hawkins, sixth-round pick last year, when he was on the field in the regular season, it was really ugly. He was really struggling against especially Week 1 versus Dallas or whenever they played Dallas early in the season. Yeah, Week 1. It was tough for him, and I think that he might just need a little bit more time. Coming from Old Dominion, a small school, now he's going up against the best of the best. Maybe this is a guy who, like you said, with you know, McLeod and Flott develops behind the scenes a couple years and then graduates. I think it might be a more long-term development plan for Trey Hawkins than short-term, but you are completely right where Andrew Phillips and Cordell Flott, these guys got to get on the field sooner rather than later because they were drafted in the top 100. And to to, uh, Andrew Phillips' point, I want to talk about him a little bit, Alex. Uh, This is a player who is getting really high marks from pretty much every draft media outlet. They're all saying this was a great pick in the third round. Trevor Sikkim of Pro Football Focus named it the number one best pick in the third round of the draft out of any of the teams who made picks. So very interesting to note that there's a lot of hype generating from maybe not Giants fans necessarily, but national media has a lot of hype surrounding Andrew Phillips, a guy who led the SEC with 23 defensive stops. That's in run defense 
which is really nice to see. Um, never had an interception in his collegiate career, but had 10 pass breakups over his final two seasons. And if you watch him play, if you turn on some of the film or even the highlights, you'll see that he's often right there in coverage. He's a sticky, aggressive, physical man coverage corner. Those are the things that you like to see. And I think that playing in a zone in the nickel for the New York Giants this upcoming season He's probably going to play a lot, and I think that he could be an underrated player for them. So, Alex, how are you feeling about this Giants rookie third-round pick entering the season? Well, you know, looking at any rookie, you have to you know take it with a grain of salt. But I do think, as I said before, this is an extremely intelligent player. He, you know, sometimes you just love to have guys that are in the right place at the right time. Andrew Phillips seems to be one of those guys. He's a great study and a great interview. You know, I think multiple teams said Andrew Phillips was the best interview that they had of any player. Um, we're talking first round. We're talking second round. We're talking any player, any position. He was one of the best interviews. This guy knows things about the game that not many other players can identify. Now, if you combine that with good coaching and combine that with a good scheme and combine that with uh, athletic talent, you might find yourself a gem. You know, if the Giants get max value out of Phillips – they're going to be very happy for a very long time because we haven't had a competent slot cornerback and I don't even know how long. It's a pro- It was a problem last year. And, you know, we had a Dory Jackson. They moved him out. They moved, you know, Darnay back. It was just a complete mess. The Giants addressed it with a third-round pick, and they addressed it with only one player, which means they must have a lot of conviction in Andrew Phillips to win that job and hold it for a very long time because otherwise they might have gone after a different player in free agency to help uh, reinforce that position. They didn't. Maybe Cordell Flock competes with them there. Totally possible. But they have a, a former third-round pick and a rookie third-round pick competing for the same job potentially. They must have a lot of conviction in one of those guys to step up and, and earn the job and actually be a competent football player um, in 2024. So to answer your question, you know, everything I've heard about the guy is nothing but positive. Now, I know his athleticism score may surprise some people, may scare a couple people. But sometimes if you're in the right place at the right time and you have really good fundamentals and you have upside, you know, he's still a young guy. Maybe, sometimes that compensates a lot. You know, we've seen a lot of guys that don't have the best athletic scores be tremendous NFL players um, just because they know where to be. They know the fundamentals. They can read, uh, you know, routes before the coverage. They know the film. They see the film. They can put themselves, put themselves in good leverage situations. Um, he's capable of doing a lot of good stuff. It's just about doing it consistently. So I think the Giants will put him in a spot where he can do that um, and hopefully maximize his talent. Yeah, totally agree, and I think that's a pretty clear overview of what the New York Giants have cooking up at CB2 slash nickel cornerback. It's, again, going to be really interesting to keep an eye on these positions throughout the summer as we get towards OTAs real soon and, of course, training camp deeper on in the summer. The New York Giants do need to figure out who is starting in their secondary this upcoming season. I have all the confidence in the world in my guy Deontay Banks, but opposite him, big question mark. Who's going to take that starting job and who will be playing slot cornerback for the New York Giants? It's going to be an intriguing battle to watch throughout the summer. And of course, we're going to continue to update you on it if the New York Giants sign anybody to their secondary or if somebody is leading the race in the secondary for the starting job. All of that, you'll hear all of your New York Giants rumors, news, info, and content right here on Fireside Giants. So, Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss the episode and comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, we will catch you on the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants.